Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokus Mystery. This will be part 233. <clears throat> we're continuing with our lesson title, The World to Come, Part 3. What we're finding is <clears throat> when the beginning of sorrows takes place, it will usher in a radically different state of existence, <clears throat> a radically different reality. And <clears throat> the Bible, Scripture, is for the most part giving us a description of things that are taking place on that side of the reality. Right. <clears throat> and uh, in that instance, it's a little confusing and maybe difficult to comprehend because we're trying to see it from this side sure. of reality. Sure. Scripture teaches the kingdom of the <clears throat> the kingdoms of the surface world will all fall, and after they fall, a Luciferian kingdom called Shishak will dominate the earth surface for a time. A time. Turn to Jeremiah 25, verse 26. Jeremiah 25. Stunning. <laughs> Just stunning. As I comprehended verse 30 and onwards, it's... Oh, yeah, awesome. Good From verse 15 to verse 26, we are getting a progression of the results of the judgment cup. Mm -hmm. And whoever comes in contact with this judgment cup, whoever partakes of it comes under an influence that ultimately destroys them. In verse 26 we see the yeah. ultimate outcome. It will ultimately engulf the entire earth. And all the kings of the north, far and near, one with another, and all the kingdoms of the world which are upon the face of the earth and the king of Shishak shall drink after them. So what we find the current governments that you see, <coughs> America, England, sorry, <laughs> Germany, <laughs> Japan, sorry, Mariko. It's okay. <laughs> they're, all, they're all going to uh, be destroyed. Destroyed, indeed. Can you read through for us? Mm -hmm. Where in the Earth matrix, if it is in the Earth matrix, that we would find the kings of the north? Not in the Earth matrix. Lower. No. The north comes from a term, Sapone, which means hidden. It's talking about the heavens. Okay. Where in the heavens? Where the second string is? Directly are? over where we are. So they're second, second stringers? Yes. Right. So the kings of the north are all second stringers. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Yes, are that's Psalms 82. Okay. The kings of the south, are they also second strings? Yes. Okay. Yes. So what will happen, the reverberation is going to bring in a regime change because the kings of the north are the ones that are supporting this pseudo-reality. And as the, the kingdoms of the Adamic race fall, ultimately the individuals that are controlling it will fall and right. be replaced right. by Shishak, the kings of the Shishak Empire. Do the kings of the North and the South, the second stringers, recognize that the first stringers are the ones who will be used against them. After the Lord has shaken them from their abodes, is that what happens? Well, it won't matter because number one, they're gonna lose power. Okay. They're going to be focusing on surviving. That's all that's gonna happen because they know they're gonna be in prison in the heart of the earth. But what I'm asking is, is Shishak, the fourth empire, used to displace the second stringers? Uh, or do the second stringers fight against each other only? They're fighting against each other. Okay. The same way the humans on Earth are fighting against right. each other. Right. And uh, basically, <clears throat> the, the, the judgment cup is what's taking them down. The influence of Elohim's right. judgment. He's he's taking the mindset because what he tells Jeremiah, they'll drink and be mad and fall. So what it does is it distorts the judgment mm. of the individual that's coming under the influence. Okay. 
the same way that the, the rulers of the current empire, they're insane, they're madmen. Right. Who spends his time building weapons to wipe out the human race? <laughs> it's, you know, totally illogical. But what you have now is the assembly of the major countries going tooth and claw <clears throat> to what uh, bring forth weapons of mass destruction that they know if they set it off the, the people that are going to set it off are have, have the same weaponry and they're going to receive it. Sure. Sure. There's nobody that wants to sit down and arbitrate, discuss anything. Everybody is in a an aggressive mode so to speak. Mm -hmm. uh, you're being warned about this. You're being warned. About, everybody is assuming their own position, if you will. That's the way World War One started. Right. That's madness. It's a, it's the madness cup of judgment. Of fury. Which, you, you you could say that the paranoia and behaviors that we see in people who insist on taking meth and crack and, and whatever. There's a similarity here. Sure. Sure. Darkness destroys the ability of the individual to be objective brings about a subjective <sighs> comprehension of the state of the individual, which has nothing to do with reality. It's all subjective. Yeah. Uh, if you will, it's like um, the human, human race being engulfed in a, um, <clears throat> in a maze of of a neurosis and psychosis. Mm -hmm. Mental aberration is taking over the whole human yes. race. Yes. <clears throat> this is what the scripture is saying. Now you know that you've explained to us before how we see world leaders, politicians, um, breaking down before our very eyes, both mentally and physically. Are they aware of what's going on as this breakdown happens? What are they thinking? They must know that they're, they're, they're different to you know, how they were five years ago. So what's in their mind? No, they, this? No, you they can't, don't know. You, no, you can't compare because you lose objectivity. So they think they're exactly as they were five years before. As far as they're concerned, they're focusing on the here and the now okay. at all times. Five minutes from then, right. now, it may be radically different right. than what they're going to be focusing on. Mm. You find that everywhere you go, Adolf Hitler could have taken control he would have won the war if he continued thinking objectively. Right. But his mind became distorted because that's what God does. Right. And, and it says in the scripture, uh, basically, that he that, that dominates the thinking of the wicked. Puts their light out, puts the candle out. And this is what we're seeing. The people that are in positions of authority, I don't care what area of society, whether it's political, social, Ecclesiastical, they are distorted, leading to total distortion. It's the judgment cup. The only ones that are going to be independent of this are the wise who operate from <coughs> the, Holy the Holy Spirit's guidance and direction. Anyway, let's go. We've got a lot to cover. So it's the king of Shishak. So the Shishak Empire is going to replace what you have here. Which brings us to the next principle. Scripture indicates Shishak will be a dominion vast and beautiful. The showcase region of the surface world. Basically it's uh, Lucifer's kingdom. Mm -hmm. But it will span all the others. You remember there's, there's three basic kingdoms. The gold, the silver, yes. and the brass. Yes. And the iron. Okay. The Shishak Kingdom will be the centerpiece, which will be basically the guiding influence for all the kingdoms. Should we understand that the Shishak Kingdom is greater in geography than the Harlot City region of Asia Minor? Mm -hmm. So how much geography are we talking about? Well, let's take a look at what the scripture says. Okay. Turn to Jeremiah 51, verse 41. This takes place at the end of the reign of Shishak when she's about to drink the cup. She will drink. She's going to drink and <laughs> be destroyed. Fantastic. That's a judgment. Which I, uh, Jeremiah says, she drinks the cup after uh, all the kingdoms and the, the rulers of the world drink. Right. 
Jeremiah 51 and we want verse 41. How is Shishak taken? Well, <clears throat> the word taken there actually in the Hebrew is captive. <clears throat> how is Shishak taken and how is the praise of the whole earth surprised? Uh, the word praise there comes from a, a term Tehillah which means pronounced glory pronounced pronounced glory. glory in other words it says how is the pronounced glory of the whole earth so she's been to showcase right. all the Luciferian kingdoms <clears throat> come to this point of total ruin the word surprise there comes from a Hebrew term tapas which means captured so seeing how Shishak uh, basically <coughs> taken captive and how is the praise the pronounced praise of the whole earth <coughs> captured how is Babylon become an astonishment among the nations? Now, all of this is referring to the time in which the Adamic civilization no longer functions. These are all Luciferian kingdoms that are responding to the demise, the dis destruction of this showpiece, which uh, they would never thought would come to this point. This, this point, she's so beautiful and so glamorous that uh, to them it would be a perpetual uh, state of existence. Mm. That's the image she would give off. Now, the woman that John saw in the heavens uh -huh. is strictly the harlot city, not Shishan. The, the, the woman basically is not in heaven, she's in the subterranean. But he was in the heavens of the no, well, he was in, in the eternity. When he saw it, he was looking strictly at the Harlot City, not the not Shishak as a whole. She, a Harlot City is part of Shishak. Yes, but what I'm asking is, is he looking at the Harlot City only, or is he looking at all of Shishak? No, he's looking at the Harlot City. Okay, because he's drawn to the Harlot City sure. by her attraction. Scripture indicates the vast region will be filled with many see, millions of people constitute the the, uh, the Shishak Empire. Mm. Probably thousands of cities. Scripture indicates the vast region will be filled with many cities which ultimately will be destroyed. Drop down to verse 43. Her cities are a desolation a dry land and a wilderness, a land wherein no man dwelleth, neither doth any son of man pass thereby. Now here it's talking about the human race and the races that the Luciferians will have access to Shishak because he's a showcase city which dominates everything. At this point, nobody is access to it because it's been a ruin and made inaccessible. Now, what we find, we said that Shishak is Satan's empire. The Shishak kingdom turned to Daniel, seventh chapter. We see the principle here. Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom. Excuse me, what verse are you reading? Daniel 7, verse 23. 23. Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth. It's the Shishan kingdom. Okay. 
which shall be diverse from all kingdoms. It's going to be altered. So this is Shishak kingdom. This is Shishak kingdom. And shall devour the whole earth. Should we understand that the beast, uh, number eight, Antichrist, mm -hmm. comes out of the Shishak system? Mm hmm Okay, okay, yes. that changes something yes. in my mind. Perfect. Yes. I couldn't understand why I'm thinking the fourth beast who I uh, associated with the beast, because he becomes a kingdom, was Shishak. That, it didn't make any sense to me until you've just explained. Yeah, well, when you see the word there. beast, it can mean kingdom, it can mean individual ruler right. in the kingdom. Right. Depending on the context of scripture. Okay. We go to. <coughs> The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse, altered. So the fourth empire, the Shishak empire, is what brings in this new reality. When we say the Shishak empire, are we including the gold, silver, and, bro and bronze? Yes. Okay. But it's led, basically dominated by the Shishak empire. Okay. It's the Shishak empire that alters this reality because this reality has only been constructed for the humans these are beings that are far above us as we are above the amoeba right so they're going to bring in conditions for themselves, for themselves. Okay. to dwell where they're comfortable right and this is what the scripture is letting us know which shall be diverse the word diverse there means altered mm -hmm. from all Kingdom. So it's going to be radically different from any kingdom that's ever preceded it from the human race. And shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. When it surface, surfaces, <coughs> the three empires that come up with the Shishak Empire are going to straddle what was the human kingdoms that's what destroys them and they're going to dominate the whole surface of the earth breaking up what was once a global human order human system replacing it with their own reality and their own dominion rule when we think of the Shishak empire should we understand that the gold silver and bronze come up at the same time or one follows after another Basically, it comes up in sequential. Right, but yeah. they're still driven but it's going by to be the Shishak. Yeah, okay. Overall, okay. everybody is going to come up basically at about the same time. So when the lesser kings, who will be the first of the fourth empire to come up, come up, uh, beginning of sorrows, when they're the first ones to see, we're still looking at Shishak, aren't we? Yes. Right. Yes. This is what the scripture is saying. It's the Shishak empire that destroys the human dominion. Okay. Now, turn to Daniel, the second chapter. Starting in verse 40. And the fourth kingdom, that's the Shishak mm -hmm. Empire, shall be strong as iron, for as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things. And as iron that breaketh all these shall it break in pieces and bruise. We just read that in Daniel 7, verse 23. It's going to wipe out the human civilization, uh, fragment it, shatter it, uh, render it totally inoperable, totally unobservable. They're not, not going to know that humans once dominated the earth because the Shishak Empire and the other kingdoms are going to so dominate the landscape, it will obliterate any... Just like now, when they find these relics in different places of mm -hmm. what once was, uh, you know, they're trying to piece things together. They get no comprehension that that basically was at one time Shishak Empire right. that was on the surface of the right. earth. Well, it's coming back. When we when we look at the word diverse from all others, mm -hmm. it occurs to me that it's not just diverse from all previous human kingdoms, but also the second stringer uh, empire. Yeah, because it's more powerful. Okay. The word actually means altered. Right. So the breaking pieces and bruise, 
Verse 41, And where is thou storest the feet and toes, part of potter's clay, part of iron? The kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it of the strength of the iron, for as much as thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay. So he's consistently talking about iron clay, iron clay. What does that mean? Well, it's symbolizing something. And as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. Shishak kingdom is going to straddle what once was human civilization. So you're going to have the Luciferians and the superior uh, status commingling with the human race, fragmenting it, dominating okay. it. So partly break broken refers to the inclusion of the human race. Yeah. All right. This was says verse forty three. Yeah. Where is thou source iron mixed with miry clay? They, they, well they who they are the iron the, the right. shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. men. But they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. In other words, <coughs> the Shishak rulers are going to be there. They're not going to commingle with the humans. You're going to have clusters of human communities here, dominated under the shadow of a dominant Shishak god who dominates that community. It's a little bit like uh, Greek mythology. Sure. Having said that, we can now comprehend a little better what the prophecies are saying. <laughs> the Shishak Empire commingling with human, the human order will straddle from the beginning of sorrows to the rapture human civilization. Turn to Revelation second chapter. Scripture indicates the capital of the Shishak Empire, which is Satan's dominion, Satan's headquarters, if you will, will straddle one of the church communities that will be a part of the gathering. This will be the church of Pergamos. Turn to Revelation 2nd chapter, verses 12 to 13. And to the angel of the church in Pergamos, write, These things saith he which hath the sharp sword with two edges. I know thy works, and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is. Satan's seat, the word seat there comes from the Greek term thronos. It says right. where his throne is. Even where Satan's throne is. Thou holdest fast my name, and is not denied my faith. Even in those days, it's talking about a past event that took place in which <clears throat> where an Antipas was my faithful martyr who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth. So it's talking about a time in the past where the saints encountered Luciferian opposition and stood fast and were martyred for it. Now, when you say a time in the past, mm -hmm. this is a past we haven't yet encountered. It's out. This that past you're referring to is our future. Well. To a certain degree, and then to another degree, it's a historical. A historical remember, past. Pergamos existed 2,000 years okay. ago. Okay. And I believe that's what he's referring to. Okay. The time in which Christianity was consistently being denigrated and um, brutalized by pagan religion, pagan believers. The church of Pergamos was set up by Christians okay. in the city of Pergamos, which was a pagan, a pagan city. capital. Okay. And in doing that, you had Christians that were martyred. Right. Let me bring your attention back to mm -hmm. uh, where Satan's seat is in verse 13. Mm -hmm. 
Thronos, the throne we understand to be in the um, subterranean regions. Mm -hmm. We understand that the kingdom of um, of Satan is extended up to the surface. Mm -hmm. Does the throne also come up to the surface? Sure. Sure. Does, are you suggesting that the... Well, are you, should we understand that the throne is relocated? Sure. It cracks the surface. <clears throat> Remember, they will mingle with the seed of men. Okay. So his throne, his headquarters, uh, uh, Shishak comes up where the human, the, the human civilization was. was originally, and it fragments it. It literally shreds it because it takes dominion. Okay. What happens to the previous location of that dominion? Is it, does it still exist? It's still there. Yeah. Remember, and this is plurality of existence. Okay. They can extend their presence, if you will, in diverse places. Is the implication that he can be sitting on a throne in both locations? Sure. Mm. Sure. Mm. Sure. Interesting. They're pluralistic creatures. Right. So Satan's throne comes to the surface, supplants the community that was there, but the gathering also commingles the Prototokus saints in that same place 2,000 years later. Sure, the Pergamos went out of sure. function. Sure. 2,000 years ago, it's going to be reestablished shortly during the beginning of Sorrows at the Gathering. Will there be another Antipas being martyred? I don't think so. Okay. Notice what he says. He talks about, <clears throat> verse 13, where Satan dwelleth, even where Satan's seed is, thou holdest fast thy name and hast not denied my faith, even in those days, in the past, where an Antipas was, my faithful martyr who was slain among you where Satan basically saying where Satan now dwelleth. So Satan wasn't dwelling there when Antipas was killed. Okay. He's dwelling there now. Where he right. and he's and, and the Lord saying this is marking the place that this is where that happened. Now I want to give you uh, uh, just an idea when you're asking about the throne. Mm -hmm. Turn to Revelation 13. That throne that place is going to become significant later on in the tribulation period. Revelation 13, we'll cover this a little later on in greater detail. Starting in verse 2. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, his mouth is the mouth of a lion. This is the Antichrist, because he's personalized in verse 3, chapter 3, and the, uh, of a lion, and the dragon gave him, 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 mm -hmm. his power, dunamis, yes. and his seat, throne, and great authority. Am I understanding this correctly, that the Antichrist that we've just read, this description, leopard, bear, lion, is the same description as beast number one, the first beast who has wings of an eagle? Well, looking at it, trying to, trying to give a comprehension, when it's first talking about beasts, it's not talking about a man, it's talking about the empire. The emp okay. So, because so, the empire comes up. So the empire is described as a leopard and a bear and a lion. Yeah. Because mm. it has attributes. Obviously. Actually, the empire is incorporating the, the, the first king's attributes when he comes up. I guess the question is, should we understand that the kings who rule those empires that we're talking about all have the same leopard, bear, lion attributes? No, only the first one because his attributes are going to change. It's not human. because he's a cherubim. That's not the reason. No, okay. no, no, no. It's what he manifests in the power that he is given 
in that respect. Right. Because if it were a, uh, if it were communal with all the rest of them, they'd all be described the same way. Right. <coughs> but sure. what he does, his characteristics, is going to be imputed into the kingdom itself, into the empire. It's going to have characteristics that the king has imputed into it that it, that basically um, cause it to function the way it functions. Right. 